I'm a news person, and here's some news, and here it is. Here it is. Okay, maybe we can actually start with something less depressing. Now, I hate to tell you, Puerto Rico, but you've thrown our budget a little out of whack. You didn't hate telling them that. You have anything else for the survivors? You have a good time. So that, that was the, uh, the good news. And here's some news. There was a mass shooting this week, and it was the largest mass shooting in modern US history. And it happened. And just like after every time a person buys a tool invented for murder and uses it to murder a bunch of people, we have a brief, if not devastatingly ineffective, discussion about gun control. We move on until the next time we can all share the three-year-old Onion article, no way to prevent this, says only nation where this regularly happens. And even though senators, pundits, and the White House think it's inappropriate to talk about it after the tragedy in Vegas, there was another shooting in Kansas an hour later, so maybe the appropriate time to talk about it to them is never. So f it, let's talk about it now. Let's talk about it all the time. Let's talk about it until they do... something. Ideally, something meaningful, but anything would be good, because what's it going to take? Apparently, top Republicans pledged to consider restricting bump stocks, which the shooter used to modify his gun to make it fire as fast as an automatic, which is, I'm sorry, barely anything. The vast majority of Americans, including gun owners, want better gun regulations. So let's maybe ban the item that makes the kill tool a little faster when in kill mode, which is its only mode other than off because it's its only purpose? Banning bump stocks is an attempt to stop a real conversation. But we need to talk about this regularly. We need to, dare I say, join the conversation. Soda. Have a talk to each other with people about the issue that you wanna. Soda. Because every time this conversation happens, it gets derailed by people shouting, oh, so you wanna ban guns? To the mere words gun control. Even though the word regulated is in the Constitution in the part that's called the Second Amendment, which is the part about guns. People dismiss gun regulation by comparing them to knives, as if knives don't have many other purposes and are something you can use from the 32nd floor to kill dozens and injure hundreds. Maybe you'll avoid the gun conversation by saying, well, there are car attacks. That van attack in France killed dozens of people. I mean, do you think car control is a good idea? Like, should you have to get a license and take a test and register your car and register it again every year? And should the industry be scrutinized for decades to develop strict safety regulations for the sake of the public? Is it clear what the point is yet? Cars drive and kill. Guns kill. That's their primary objective. Target practice? You can do that with things that look like guns but don't kill people. Hobby? Your hobby kills people. Collector? Collect things that don't kill people. It's all some form of guns don't kill people, people kill people. Ignoring that guns were literally invented to kill people. There are so many empty platitudes and disingenuous arguments designed to not even discuss better gun regulation. But not anymore? for the purposes of this video? Great! So, gun regulation. What's it going to take? Well, information, for one, facts. The Center for Disease Control is currently barred from doing a comprehensive study into gun violence. And that sounds, no offense to idiots, dumb. We can't even study the problem. Which isn't to say there's no information, but it can be a little all over the place and interpreted in different ways. For example, you've probably heard there were at least seven, but possibly up to 337 mass shootings this year. This depends on the definition, how many people died, some tallies include injuries, others don't, so it's easy to get muddled in the details, when maybe the main detail should be people with guns frequently use those guns to try to shoot people with guns. And a lot of people, the NRA specifically, skew facts to avoid truths. Which brings us to... Fine, let's talk about Chicago. These days, whenever gun control comes up, or even just crime, but specifically black crime, a lot of people bring up Chicago because the president and right-wing media bring it up a lot. Maybe because they hate the previous president who's linked to Chicago and being black, but also the president and right-wing media are dumb and liars because Chicago isn't the most dangerous city in America, and although you can say it has the most homicides, the dummies and liars forget to point out that Chicago is also one of America's most populous cities. So per capita, in terms of homicide, they're actually further down the list. Here's 
smart conservative boy Charlie Kirk pointing out that USA Today gives Illinois a B plus for gun laws, despite 527 killed a year. Gee, Charlie, it's almost like if you zoom in just a little bit and look at literally any of the surrounding states, you'll see they have Fs and Ds, and maybe that's where they're getting their guns. For example, via the gun show loophole. But news person, I saw a Steven Crowder video shared by far too many smart conservatives, and he went to gun shows and tried to buy a gun without a background check, and he debunked the gun show loophole. Or did you watch a video by Steven Crowder in which a third of the clips are him at an actual gun store, a third feature him dropping clear red flags that he's going to use his gun to murder people, and a third are him talking to licensed vendors, which don't have anything to do with a gun show loophole. Great video, Crowder. Maybe if you were louder, it would be harder to tell what a liar you are. Or maybe check out a real investigation by professionals in the city of New York that illustrated how easy it is to get a gun at a gun show if you're not being incredibly misleading and murdery about it. And he knows it. They all know it. The NRA definitely knows it. They talk about national stats knowing full well that states have different laws and federal regulation is effective. Here's a common thing you'll see. As the number of firearms goes up, nationally, the number of gun homicides have gone down, nationally. This of course ignores that only 3% of the population owns 50% of the guns, and also ignores the steep dip in homicides in the 90s when Bill Clinton, rapist, enacted federal gun regulations. Then it evens out during George W. Bush. Also, as Charlie Kirk points out, actually, most gun deaths are suicides, not murder. Yeah, Charlie, that's a problem, and doesn't stop the gun regulation talk. Smart conservative boy Ben Shapiro shared this, showing that state by state, good, the number of guns and the number of murders doesn't show a correlation. But let's take a look at gun deaths state by state. Oh, there appears to be a direct correlation? So maybe suicide should be a part of this conversation, even though we don't have a regular mass suicide national tragedy that sparks the conversation. Well, they want to kill themselves, they'll do it anyway. Regulating guns won't help. Except not having easy access to an instant kill machine makes suicide harder, and the vast majority of people who fail suicide on the first attempt don't attempt a second time. Statistically and logically, having a gun makes it more likely that you or someone you know will die from, from guns. Facts matter, and we need more of them, and to be honest about them. As smart boy Ben Shapiro regularly points out, facts don't care about your feelings. Which brings us to our new segment, Feelings, the complex chemical reactions humans evolved in order to foster empathy and connection to aid us in our collective survival. Yes, even though facts don't care about your feelings, people do and can change minds. Empathy can change minds. A story went viral of a longtime gun advocate who was at the shooting with some potential good guys with guns, and has changed his mind because having more guns wouldn't have stopped the 32-story high assault rifler. It can be frustrating to hear that what it takes is literally experiencing gun violence. Like people who oppose gay marriage until they have a kid who whoops is gay. Or Jimmy Kimmel had an experience that made him realize that if he weren't extremely wealthy, his son would be dead. So sometimes feelings and empathy are important in determining what's right. Do we have a clip of empathy? Now, I hate to tell you, Puerto Rico, but you've thrown our budget a little out of whack. <laughs> well, that ain't it. But also, a dude literally shot a bunch of Congress members when they were outside playing a fun game and they didn't do shit about gun regulation. So maybe this isn't a great answer to what it will take. Oh, I forgot about money. Money can do it. The NRA donates a lot of money to Congress to vote against gun legislation. Here's a really long thread of all the Congress ghouls sending out their thoughts and prayers accompanied by the amounts of money they get from the NRA and their votes against gun legislation. Let's add a little yakety sack sound alike. Fun! So, it sucks that we have to talk about money in regards to the right thing to do, but public opinion historically doesn't change policy. Money does. Rich people do. But hey, that's capitalism. Innovation happens when there's profit incentive. We invest money in places that will make more money. Rarely, if ever, do we say, this would cost a lot of money, but it's the right thing to do. So let's briefly talk money. President Trump received $21 million from the NRA. He's also spent $71 million of taxpayer money on golf so far. And gun violence costs America an estimated $229 billion a year. After mass shootings, gun manufacturer stocks go up. We spend so much on this and we're not doing enough or anything. What's it going to take? Maybe after Vegas, people will be too scared to go to concerts or out in public and tourism will tank and the economy will get worse. And then we'll be like, hey, I want that money. Let's fix this people scared of guns killing people problem. 
what's it going to take? Everybody with guns being black? Oh good, my sarcasm was true. In 1967 in California, the Mulford Act was passed, and it's a law that revoked the right to openly carry loaded firearms in public. And it was enacted by California's lefty commie governor at the time, R Uno Rowdy. Round Rauno Regis. Rowdy. Ronald Reagan? The first president the NRA ever endorsed? Oh, I see. The Mulford Act was because of the Black Panthers, famous for legally, openly carrying weapons and looking super intimidating to white politicians. Do we have a pick? Of people with guns looking intimidating? No. No? Keep, no, keep going. Uh, look close. No? Not them. They're good. There we go. Anywho, the Black Panthers would openly carry guns and observe police interactions with black people. Because at the time, police would often brutalize minorities. A at the time. Yeah. Not, not anymore. No. Nope. Not. Any more. The Black Panthers, being armed in what could easily be described as a well-regulated militia, didn't sit right with California's white legislators, so they created gun control laws that would take away the Panthers' guns. Interestingly, Reagan and his fellow Republicans later went on to be the biggest proponents of gun rights after the Black Panthers had been disbanded. Huh. Because the reality of gun control is that historically it's enacted because of the marginalized and enforced against the marginalized. California passed a law banning high capacity magazines last year and the sheriffs openly say that they're not going to go after people with them, but if they catch a drug dealer with one, they'll add that to their rap sheet. Gun control doesn't affect patriotic sportsmen, it affects people like Philando Castile, who was shot and killed after telling an officer that he legally had a gun in the car and was going to reach for his information. Or John Crawford, who was shot and killed for holding a toy gun. Or Tamir Rice, who was shot and killed for holding a toy gun. Black people are significantly more likely than white people to be gun homicide victims, but half as likely as white people to have a firearm in their home. But what about Chicago? Ugh. Do we have a joke about any of this? didn't think so. And we didn't even get into the fact that 98% of shootings are done by men or the clear link between gun violence and domestic violence. And maybe part of it's also a mental health issue, like Republicans always say to avoid talking about guns, like Paul Ryan just did in response to Vegas, despite working tirelessly to make access to mental health more difficult. But also, 4% of the population is made up of people with a serious mental illness, and 4% of the violent crime in America is committed by people with a serious mental illness. So actually, it's pretty good. It's complex, and we need to stop avoiding it every time. It's uncomfortable and hard. It involves domestic violence, law enforcement, depression, misogyny, hobbies, power, freedom, and our beautiful flag. It seems insurmountable, but do something. What's it going to take, you know? What's it going to take? So far, about 300 mil at the box office. <laughs> Pretty impressive. Haven't seen it yet. Is it good? A clown movie. Hey everybody, thanks for watching that video. If you want to subscribe to our channel, click the big C in the middle. And if you want to get notifications when we have new videos, click the bell icon, leave a comment. And hey, why don't you call your congressman on the number below and tell them to eat